suspect told police that he was driving the victim to Georgia to marry her. But before he got there, the assault occurred. 19-year-old Kung Bik Sim is charged with attempted rape and criminal confinement. He met the victim on Facebook and they conducted an online relationship. They had never met in person. Sim learned she was going to be in Indiana for a wedding and that was their first contact. He spotted her at the wedding and took her phone away from her. She followed him to the car to get it back and that is when he took off with her in his car. Once on I-65, motorists called police about a couple fighting. A state trooper arrived in minutes. He uh, heard the woman screaming from the back seat of the car. When he ran around to the side of the car, he was able to see her with her dress up around her waist and the um, defendant was on top of her with his genitalia exposed. And he immediately broke that up? Yes, he had to forcibly remove the defendant from her and uh, stopped it at that time. Sim is Chin. He comes from Myanmar. There are 15,000 Chin people in the Indianapolis area. According to court documents, Sim said in his culture, this type of behavior and action was allowed and customary. That notion was quickly disputed. As far as the custom goes, as far as our Chin community or anywhere in Burma, uh, that's unheard of. Uh, and our custom totally is against something like a forceful uh, whether uh, it's uh, sexually, it is totally against our custom. And what would have happened if the state police had not arrived so quickly on the scene? Trooper Joseph Malone is glad he could help. And then I just took the aggression out of the situation, neutralized the situation, and then you could see the fear that was on the young lady's face dissipate as I sat there and calmed her down as we waited for other units to arrive. The suspect is free on $19,000 bond. His initial court appearance is set for May 11th. Derek Thomas, RTV6. And let's turn now to weather. Rain is starting to move out of central Indiana tonight, and the severe storms that barreled through yesterday, long gone. But another big headline now emerging. Let's get right over to Storm Team 6 Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory on this Friday. Hi, Kevin. And that new headline, something you need to dress for as colder air moves in. The showers are gone, as we mentioned. We did have some drizzle or light showers early in the afternoon. There's the big temperature change. Nearly 30 degrees cooler at this hour than it was 24 hours ago. Thunderstorms then part of that transition to the cooler temperatures. 40 degrees in Lafayette. They'll lead the way for all of us into the 30s. 41 in Peru. Temperature down to the south in the mid 40s. It's the wind that grabs your attention. Still 15 to 20 miles per hour. That cold northwest wind will continue through the evening hours. Temperatures feel like 32 in Lafayette and Peru. We're talking wind chill temperatures here on the last day of March. Temperatures tonight uh, will fall into the 30s. No umbrella needed if you're headed out. You need the heavy coat though. Temperatures through the overnight hours into the first thing in the morning. Mid 30s to upper 30s. Cloudy but dry start to your Saturday. I went to go check on the status of my state refund and I was informed that there was a hold on um, approximately $306 of my state refund. Working for you tonight, a consumer alert after some tax refunds were put on hold, some out of the blue. Call 6 Investigates, Kara Kenny joining us live in Cairo. Why have some people's returns landed in the lurch and what do they have to do to get their money? That's right, Jason. This is the first year that IUPUI is going after its former students' state tax refunds. Now, other schools have been doing this for years, like Purdue and Ivy Tech, but IUPUI says it's getting to the point where they got to take a different approach, and that's why they're doing it, to go after more than $11 million in outstanding debt. Yakisha Rollins got quite the shock when she checked the status of her tax refund, $306 on hold by IUPUI. It was just taken back by surprise. Surprised because Yakisha hasn't attended IUPUI since the mid-90s, back when jean jackets with patchwork were the in thing. I only went for a semester and then I left the school and went to um, Ivy Tech. Yakisha also got a letter in the mail, and she's not alone. IUPUI is going after tax refunds as a last resort in the hopes of recouping more than $11 million in old debt. More than 800 former students' tax refunds are impacted this year. But IUPUI bursar Dan Youngblood says don't panic. Just because you get that notification letter doesn't mean I'm going to take your money. How do I prove that I don't have this debt if it happened to me 20 years ago? Well, I, th I think the main thing is give us a call. 
The debts come from everything from tuition to housing charges. IUPUI will release the hold on your tax return if you call them and work something out. Probably the worst thing that could happen in this process is that they not contact us because that tells me that I'm going to be intercepting their refund from now on until that debt is paid in full. So far, the program is working and many former students are paying up. As for Yakisha Rollins, she called IUPUI and told them she does not have any debt. They researched and researched and researched and they were unable to actually link the debt to anything valid. So in my case, they were able, they did make it a zero balance and are releasing the hold. Yakisha wants other former students to know their debt could come calling more than 20 years after the fact. Now, if you feel like you really did pay your bill in full and on time, most universities do have a formal appeals process. So if you get one of these letters in the mail, your best bet is to contact your university directly, either via phone or email. We're live at IUPUI. I'm Call 6 Investigates, Kara Kenny.